Hey guys, it's Noah Master, and welcome back to another Redstone video. In this video, I'm going to showcase an interesting uh, memory design that I've made with Redstone, and also some of the concepts that I used to create it, because I think it is a very interesting uh, method. I use a very interesting concept to create this, what I'm floating in front of right now, and I think it could help people with a lot of other things as well. So first of all, what is this? This is a diagonal dual read register. Now, we, you could use this in some sort of CPU. Uh, what you could do is you could stick your diagonal carry look everywhere adder right above this, kind of like that. You can kind of imagine it as a, a triangle since the uh, carry look everywhere adder, like the one down there, fits right above it, which is very nice because you can have the outputs directly onto this bus and then loop directly back, which is very efficient and it fits nicely under them. And this is dual read, so there's two different reads, and you can have one read go back to the A input of your ALU, and the other input go back to your B input of your ALU, which makes this very fast. And another reason that this is so fast is it has a one tick read. Once I disable the, the read, like, this, there's no data in it right now, so it'll stay off, but if there was data, then that would come on, and you can see that that only takes one tick. See that torch? That's the only tick it takes. Uh, the instruction time, the time it takes for the actual signal to come through this bus doesn't really matter, since you can pipeline that quite easily. So, yeah, this, it's uh, one tick read, which makes this RAM very fast and four ticks through from the input bus all the way to the output bus through these, which is also very fast for diagonal dual read. This design is also quite smaller than the leading design by uh, Darkroom, which is still a phenomenal design, and I re still respect it a lot. This took me a long time to figure out, and it's actually quite funny because uh, I spent like 10 hours working on a different design and I decided to restart and within 20 minutes I had this and that's just because I figured out a trick to doing it and I'll talk about that later but first of all let's actually well save some stuff to this and try it out so our input buses are these lines up here this is for 8 bits you can expand it to 16 bits just fine uh, these input lines are very easy to repeater uh, you would just do something like this and then change this to a block and there you go, that's how you would repeater it. So let's not, let's not worry about that right now though. Uh, let's input uh, just every other input on. So, like that. And let's save it to the first address. So we'd hit this right lever, like so. And now we can turn these off. And let's save something to the second address. How about all the other inputs on? Let's try to make a pattern. And let's save that to our second address. Now let's try out the read. Let's read what we've saved into the first address through the first read. So when we hit that lever, what we saved into the first address, which is that pattern, comes out. And now let's read what we saved into the second address with the second read, which is this lever here, since this is the first, the second read for the first one, and this is the second read for the second one. Actually, before, they do, before we do that, let's just read from both outputs at the same time, just to show, you that, show that you can, so you can see we're reading the same thing through both outputs. And now let's read the, the other one through both outputs, and you can see we have that, uh, that kind of pattern that's what we inputted. And just for fun, let's, let's trigger both of these at the same time. If we read both of those at the same time, well obviously both of all the outputs are going to be on. Uh, you would never actually do that in a CPU because, well, that ruins your data. Um, now let's save something else. Let's save to the third register. Let's turn all the inputs on. Let's save it to the third register, which is this lever here. 
and let's output it first with the first read. So we hit that lever here, which will output it. There you go, all the outputs are on. So let's turn that back off. And now let's turn it down here on. And let's read the second thing we have saved in up at the top. So you can see here, you can choose whatever two uh, addresses, even the same ones if you really want to, with from within your memory and read them back out, which means you can send this straight back to an ALU or something to do mathematical operations them and on them and then save them right back to this. So this makes your CPU very fast, especially since this unit itself is pretty fast as well. Now, how did I make this so small? If you know anything about how these things work and have ever tried to design one, you know that they are incredibly difficult, especially when they are as small as this, because this one is only three blocks wide. One, two, three, one, two, three. And obviously, two blocks wide that way, stacked for the inputs. If you know anything about uh, if you've ever tr actually tried building one of these, you'd know that it's very difficult, and it can sometimes be really big. And the way I did this was, if you look in here, you might notice that some of these lines are on, but just faintly in signal strength. That's because I used a chest with only a few items in it to produce a signal strength of two. And let me pull out, or just actually build, my read mechanism, and I'll kind of demonstrate how this works. A little bit of lag there. So we have two torches, right? one right there, one right there, and one of our read inputs is right there, and then the other one is right here, like that. So our outputs would be here and here. Is that right for the top one? Um, yeah, it, it actually goes this way, but here, I'll make it right there. So let's call these reads 1 and 2. I'll, I'll use blue blocks for reads. And now we have our data input. And remember, this, this uh, continues underneath. Normally, you would think, hey, how am I supposed to get power to here and to a torch all the way down there? I would have to go around this block somehow. So I'd have to do some crazy sort of busing with all sorts of weird spaces and stuff and weird logic. And it, it gets insane. I, I spent lots of time trying to figure this out until I got this. Or you could use this chest and comparator thing, which I figured out. And I don't think I've seen many people actually do this in normal logic. I'll just use some of my swag stones. So now you can see that this goes through this block, and to these, uh, it powers this torch and this torch just fine, and the read will work. So if I have a, an input right here, which is how I did it in there, this could be my data input. So if I have data coming in, these are all off now, and my reads will read the data out wherever I want. Now you might think that this might cause interference, because you're, well, powering this here, and you're powering this. If we turn this off, you can see powering this line up here. But since this signal strength is so weak, it's never actually going to affect anything. Like, if I tried busing to the next unit up here, well, this signal is definitely already depleted by the time it gets up there. And for these buses down here, it's a bit more sketchy. Uh, our next unit would be right here. So our next read would be right there. But as you can see as well, this signal is already depleted by the time it gets there. Uh, is that right? One, two, three, one, yeah. 
So this two uh, signal strength of two is just enough to get through here and down this little bus here to this. And that is the reason why this is so compact and the reason why I was able to use this type of read to create one tick reads on both both reads. And I think that's pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that before. And it's a very interesting concept. And I'm sure you can apply this to all sorts of other types of logic as well when you're in tight situations and you need to get something done. I'm, I'm, I guarantee that this can be applied to other places and I will try it when I'm doing redstone from now on because this is a too good of an idea to not use. So there you go. I am going to provide a download link for a schematic of this, uh, this register, dual read register, and a stackable version in the description of this video. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this is my plot on the Ore Redstone server. Be sure to check out the Ore Redstone server if you have not already done so, because if you like this video, then you probably like the server. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.